In this tutorial we will learn how to do realistic interior lighting in V-Ray. I will walk you through the basic scene preparation and then the two different lighting setups, one with the V-Ray Sun and Sky system and then another one that just relies on the single HDRI. So let's first quickly walk through the scene in here and you can see I have a camera set up here that just focuses on this room and the overall scene just looks like this. So it's just a bunch of different walls, windows, doors and the floor and the ceiling. And then I just put some of those assets in here. And all these assets all come from this new Chaos Cosmos browser, which is part of VR 5.1. If you wanna check out the video tutorial about 5.1, you can find it in my channel as well. And now let's hide them for now because we don't need them. And we just only focus here on the general lighting of our room. So now going through the render settings, I won't go into too much detail because there's their own dedicated video about this that you can find in my channel. But here in the GI tab, it is quite important that you use this kind of setup here for interior spaces in particular. So the primary engine should be set to brute force and then the secondary engine should be set to light cache. And this way you will make sure that you will get an accurate GI calculation. And that is especially important for interior spaces where much of the light basically comes from light that is bouncing around in our scene. So just be sure that you use these kind of settings in here. And now let's go on with creating our first lights. So in my opinion, the most easy and controllable setup for this kind of interior lighting is a V-Ray Sun and Sky setup. So we just create a new V-Ray Sun into our scene. Once we do that, it will ask if we automatically want to add a V-Ray Sky into the environment map. So we say yes. And then if we check out here our environment, you can see that now there is a default V-Ray Sky added into here. Now as a disclaimer, using the V-Ray Sky here in the environment and lighting your scene with the environment in here is not the recommended way to do it. And I will later show you why, but for now, let's just leave it like this because that's the way it's being set up here by default if we create a V-Ray Sun. And now let's see first what kind of result we're getting. And then later on, we will discuss why you shouldn't use this way and which way you should use instead. So now if I start the rendering, I will see that I have some result in here, but it's extremely dark. So in this scene, this basically has two reasons. So reason number one would be that the sun here is way too low. So let's just make it a little bit higher, for example, like this, so that we have some of the sunlight here coming into our room. But we'll see that it still is extremely dark. And the reason for that is that here, our camera is using the wrong exposure settings for an interior scene. So you can see at the moment, this exposure value here is set to 15, but now let's put a value, for example, of nine. And then we will see that we have a brightness, which is much more suitable for this interior scene in here. And this way we wouldn't need to adjust here the brightness of our sun itself. So you should always leave these intensity settings here by their default, unless you have a very specific reason to change it. And then just adjust your camera to make sure that the camera settings are correctly the same way like you would do in the real life. You couldn't change the brightness of the sun, but you can just adjust your camera to make sure that it exposes correctly for an interior scene. But now we have the problem that we have a picture that doesn't really look very realistic yet. And we have these kind of really weird colors. And the reason for that is that we don't use any tone mapping at the moment. And that's what we're gonna change now. So if you wanna know more about tone mapping in detail, I have a set our own dedicated basic lighting tutorial in V-Ray that goes through these kind of very basic concepts. But what we can do here in V-Ray is for example, add this filmic tone map in here. That's basically the easiest setup to do it. And then just choose one of these different types in here, for example, this one right here, I think looks kind of nice. Now we went from an image that looks like this to something like this, which already looks way more realistic. Of course, there's also additional adjustments that we could do, for example, change the white balance by just adjusting this parameter in here, for example, something like, like this, for example, and then our picture is less warmish and more neutral and so on. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can do here in your tone mapping to make the picture look more realistic and then now we can proceed with our next problem, which is this kind of excessive noise that we see here everywhere. And as I said earlier, this has to do that we use here our V-Ray Sky directly in the environment and this way use it also for illumination. So I can demonstrate this by disabling here our sun. We can see that now this whole illumination here comes from this environment tab in here. And that's something that, especially for interior scenes, is very undesirable because this does not support a technology which is called MIS, multi-important sampling. And we don't have the time to go into too much detail, but it's basically a technology that helps V-Ray to understand the scene and the lighting much better. And then this way also sample it in a much more smart way, which will help to get rid of all of this excessive noise in here. 
So let me first show you how it was done in earlier V-Ray versions so that you can understand why now the new way in V-Ray is much faster. So in earlier V-Ray versions, in order to avoid these problems, you would need to add some light type, which is called portal light. So let's add these kind of lights in here. And I prepared this already. At the moment, they are all switched off, but let's just select one of those lights in here and then see what kind of setting it uses. So basically it's just like these lights are just focused around these windows. So all the part where basically the light from the exterior can enter here our interior. And then we enable here this skylight portal option and that's basically it. So we have all of these portal lights that you have to put here on each of the windows. Then when you enable it, let me just stop the rendering in here. So then when we enable all of those lights in here, we can do a new rendering and then see how the result looks like in this way then. So as you can see, if I now zoom in close, you can see we have now much less noise and that's basically now the much better way to do it. But that is, as I said, the way how it was done in earlier V-Ray versions. And now you don't need to add these kind of portals in here because the dome light has a way to do all of this stuff here by itself and do it fully automatically because it can take quite a while to add all of these kind of portal lights in here. So let me just disable all of those lights and then hide them so that they don't get here in our way. And now I'll show you the new way of how you should basically light interior scenes. So instead of all of these portal lights that we have to create manually, the only light we need is basically here, this V-Ray dome light. So let me just click this button here in the toolbar, add a new V-Ray dome light. And then we only need to put in here the V-Ray sky into the texture map. And then we can just completely ignore this one here, just make it completely black again. And then everything will come from this light. And then the important option you can find in here under this advanced option, use MIS. So that's for the multi-important sampling, which is supported by the dome light. And then also there is this option here, adaptive dome, which will basically eliminate the need to place these kind of portal lights because V-Ray will smartly understand and determine by itself where are the openings here in our interior, where are the windows and so on. So always make sure that this option here is enabled as well. So now this interior setup is basically complete and just enable this one here back again because we disabled it before. And then let's start rendering and see what we got. So you can see now we have basically this very simple setup just with this dome light and the V-Ray sun. And then we can just move our sunlight here around in different directions, make it higher or lower and so on until we find like a nice look that we want. And in order to speed up now our rendering even more, we can enable a denoiser that basically will give us very fast feedback about the final image quality. So in order to enable the denoiser, we just need to enter here our settings again and then just make sure that the V-Ray denoiser is enabled. So in our render elements, it is this denoiser that I added in here and we will use this NVIDIA AI denoiser. Just enable it, close it again and then restart here our rendering. Now you will see that the denoiser very fast will kick in and give us a pretty good result. So we can see now basically we have a almost nose free image and this just took a few seconds to render. We can even move here our camera around in different positions. See how basically the room looks from this angle. And you just need to wait a couple of seconds until you can get an almost final quality result. We can also enable here these kind of lens glow. So that will just show the brightness here of the sun part here a little bit stronger. Let me just add the intensity a little bit higher here. Like something like this. You can see that now we get a really strong lens glow. Now it's basically way too strong. I think I just stick here with the default value of 0.5. Then we can explore here our scene. We can check different rooms. And it just always takes a few seconds. And then you will get basically a finished render quality result together with the denoiser. So all in all, it's very fast to make some nice looking interior in V-Ray. And now the only thing we need to do is to go back here to our camera. And then we can show here our decoration again. And I even have some trees set in front of the window. And now we have here our whole interior setup. And yeah, basically after a short time, you even have some finished quality result. You can tweak a little bit further with like tone mapping here to make it look even better. For example, you could add like some kind of contrast correction on top. 
to get exactly the result that you want. Change, for example, the saturation, add a little bit more saturation in here, for example, something like this. And then you have very fast, a finished quality result of your interior, which basically just took a few minutes to set up. And together with all of the assets that are available in the Chaos Cosmos browser library, you can very fast populate your interior setups and can get some really nice high quality result. So now the question is only if you don't want to use this V-Ray Sun and Sky setup, but you want to use an HDRI to light your entire scene. The setup is basically even easier like this. So let's stop the rendering and then we will delete all of these things here. And then we can open, for example, this Cosmos browser and go to HDRIs. And then let's just find some daylight HDRI and use, for example, something with a very strong sunlight to have a similar look like what we had before. For example, this one in here, you just drag it inside the scene and then it will create here a V-Ray dome light for you with a multiply of one. The HDI put here as a V-Ray bitmap into the texture, enable this adaptive dome and also the multi-important sampling. And then basically you're pretty much set to go. The only thing that I would change would be like this lock texture to icon, which will do what I show you in a second. So once we start the rendering, then you can at least turn around here this HDRI, move it left and right, and the lighting will update accordingly. Let's just wait a second until this one here updated. So we have apparently quite bluish sky in here, and also like the sun direction is now the wrong direction. But if we move this light in this direction here, for example, or the other direction, at one point we should see some sunlight entering the windows, which is here, for example. And that basically just enables this lock texture to icon so that we can rotate here our HDRI in the scene and then basically it will update accordingly. So this HDRI seems to be more bluish tint than the V-Ray Sun Sky system that we used before. So maybe this white balance here is not really necessary anymore or we could even make it like more warm instead, for example, something like this. So that's always something that you need to tweak in order to get like a finished result. But basically that's the entire setup to render your whole scene with a V-Ray dome light. You just use like uh, HDRI in the texture, enable adaptive dome and make sure that multi-important sampling is enabled. And that's basically everything that's required to get a finished high quality result in V-Ray for interior lighting. So this basically concludes the basic interior lighting setup procedure in V-Ray. If you want to download the scene and try it out by yourself, you can find it on my Patreon, also among many other bonus videos and other bonus scenes that you can download there. And other than that, I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Make sure you subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye bye and take care.